Let's talk about routing now. So this is about taking our IP packets that exist at layer three and moving them through network devices called routers. In terms of uh, the OSI model, we see that this is at the third layer of the OSI model where we have routing. So specifically, I want to cover what it, what it is, how it works, and we already did an example in class, uh, so we won't be doing that in this video, but uh, hopefully what we did in class will reinforce what I'm about to talk about. So primarily the issue with routing is if you have multiple options to go through a network, and let me just pull in an example of a network, like here's one right here, let's just say I'm at point A or a message enters at point A and I need to get a message over here to D, uh, what is the best path to send a message starting at A, if A is a router, and getting to D? Obviously A to D would be a nice direct path, but there's I could go A to C to F to H to K and go all over the place and eventually get back to D. So there's actually multiple pathways to get there and a router's job is to decide uh, if I'm connected to two different routers or three different routers, which paths should I start sending a, um, a packet down as I receive it in order for it to get there most effectively, most efficiently, quickest, etc. Um, so uh, another example of this is if I want to send a packet from computer A2 to C1. So if the packet starts here, it goes through a switch and it makes it over here to the router. And this router is connected to router B and router A is also connected to router C, and if it wants to get over here to C1, it could either go through B and get down to there, or it could go all the way over to C and then to B and get down to there. So um, router A's choice then is what's the path, and that's its job. So a router is something that sits on different networks, and when I say different networks, I'm, I'm thinking in terms of if you have a local area network with a particular address scheme like 192.168.1. and then you know 253 addresses within there or something that you're assigning out uh, or for um, that is not that that's probably one cohesive network but if you had another one a 192.168.3 something and a 192.168.5 dot something those would represent completely different networks each with maybe several hundred devices in those and so um, our router bridges are independent or separate networks that have different addressing schemes in fact if I come back to here uh, we can see that on the top side of router A it's connected to 10.10.100.0 that's a network over here is 10.10.200.0, that's another network, and 10.10.20.0, that is a third network, it's connected to all three, and they're all different. Uh, another way to look at uh, a router, if you want to look at it this way, I don't know if it helps or not, but uh, I've compared a network, a separate network, or segments of a network, to floors of a building. So here we have the 40th floor and the 26th floor. So a router could be sort of like your mailroom in that it can take traffic uh, between floors which represent completely different networks, and it, and it really separates them, but also sits on the border or the edge between them. Okay, so there's a couple things that we need to be concerned about, two, two in, in particular, as it, re, as it relates to being a router, if I take on the identity of a router. One is I need to, before I send out any information, I need to build a topology of the network. So again, if I'm router A and I come online, I need to know about everything, every other router in the network so that if I get a request to say some, some send something uh, to... Um, a network that's connected to router L, I need to know what are all the possible pathways to get there. So job one, before I can send information through my network, is to understand the topology. And uh, so that's one thing we do with our networks via a couple of different protocols. Um, and when I say networks, I mean routers. Um, another thing we do, though, is after we've got the topology figured out, then we actually make a choice of which is the best path to send things through. So at a high level, uh, router is pretty simple in that sense. Okay, so here's an even more simplified version of a network. Uh, we've only got two routers, and let's just say I'm com I'm a I am router A, and I need to send something over to network 10.10.10.0. 10 
I'm not directly connected to it. But what I should have, if my router has done its job, is it should have built a table inside of it that says, I am connected to, or I can reach 10.10.10.0 .10 .10 through router B. And I can show you the programming for that next, in the next uh, slide. So if I were on a Cisco router, for example, I could type in the command IP route, type in the destination network, and then the next hop, meaning the next at the end, meaning what is the IP address that I should send uh, information to if I want to get over to that destination address so or destination network. And, and keep in mind, when I say destination network, that means there could be a lot of devices in that network. So um, down here, we see, we've actually have it filled in. From router A, we want to get to the destination 10.10.10.0. And the way to get there is by going to IP address 10.10.200.2. Uh, I'll add in some more information to this, uh, more context right now. Coming back to this again. So we're saying if I want to get to this network, and, and a device on this network might have a .1, .2, .3, etc., I'm going to go through 10.10.200.2. So we're kind of implying here that within this network, named 200.0, there is probably a 200.2 associated with this network interface, and there's probably a 200.1 associated with this network interface, and the whole network between those two things uh, is called 200.0. And, and so, okay, again, um, oops, jumped too far ahead. If I want to get to that other network, I'm going to send traffic to this particular IP address. And uh, if I were to consider one of those more complicated diagrams like this, there might be more than one. In this case, I could have dual entries to get to maybe C. I could say that uh, I could go through um, this network or this the IP address over here, or I could send to this network and this IP address right here. I would have two entries, both of which um, I could assume would get uh, the packet ultimately delivered to C1. So there'll be redundant entries to a uh, same network, um, but through different IP addresses in my um, routing tables, as I will call them. Uh, if after I've created an entry in my routing table using a command like this, then I can type in show IP route, and I can look down here after a whole bunch of explanatory information, and I see that I've created it with the keyword S, a static route saying that if I want to go to this network, I can get to it via this IP address. And, and just as some, some additional information in the context of this conversation, um, this C means I'm physically connected to uh, a particular network, which kind of plays into how we get to that IP address. Okay, um, some additional information is that as, as a router is determining you know, which route it's going to send it to, if it has multiple options, okay, so again, if I'm A do I, and I want to get to something like J, do I send it through C or do I send it through D? Those are my only options, and what are the IP addresses associated with that? Well, some of the things that are going to come into play as I determine that are how many hops does it take to get to J, or how reliable, reliable is a particular network, or how fast is the connection on uh, as I go to router D versus router C? Or how long is the delay? How long does it actually take to go from where I am to the destination? All, all, and there's also other things you can, metrics you can create, like the cost that a network administrator sets for um, going through a particular network to get through um, to get to a particular location. So all, all of these things are, are examples of factors that you could use and include in your routing table. So in, a, in addition to just um, some, some of these mechanics, you could add in some metrics that would let you know whether one IP address going through that path is better or worse than another. Okay, and um, as we build our routing tables, there's really two key foundational types uh, of protocols that we use for building those. One of those is distance vector and the other one is link state. Last we have here kind of a hybrid between the two. On the next two slides there's an explanation of distance vector versus link state. Now we don't need to go too depth in depth into this. Um, some things I will say about them though is distance vector is like every single 
Imagine that every single one of these routers has a complete table of everything else in the network that it's built up and it's constantly and regularly sending to um, all of its neighbors its entire routing table. Imagine if you have a phone with your contact list and you send every other node all of the information in your contact list like a phone book. Um, that this is actually kind of frowned upon now and people don't like distance vector and, and in one of its example protocols which is RIP um, routing information protocol it's just considered inefficient because uh, in networks where this is implemented it's just constantly sending the whole phone book every single one every single router is sending its entire phone book of information to everybody else and not only does it have a list of connections with distance vector protocol but it also has some additional information included um, some of these being for example the next hop or the cost to go through a particular route uh, so this is information that is not included in our other main class of protocol, our link state. And so, um, anyway, that's just, this, these are just some of the features that distinguish distance vector from link state is that in addition to just all the connections, it's got hops and costs to, to get to a particular place. This is also called, distance vector algorithms are also called routing by rumor. So if you're gonna, and the reason why that's the case is because um, any table that one router receives from another, it just automatically assumes that everything that it's received is true. Um, if we go to link state algorithms, it's it's different in that, well, here, here's some of the features that define it. Um, you're only getting the connectivity information being passed around the network to build the routing tables. So it's, uh, rather than getting, a, if I was, you know, A to D, uh, uh, it's, D just knows that it's connected to A and B initially, and um, oh man, I'm I'm dying here. It's this last slide, and I'm gonna mess it up. Um, it, instead of getting a, a full table from A or B, it's never gonna get anything like that. It just gets uh, what we call a link state advertisement saying what um, it, D will announce to the network what it's connected to, and. Very, what happens with link state is very quickly when when uh, this type of network comes online, everything broadcasts to everything else, so it's really processor intensive for a few for a few minutes, and then basically the network converges and you know what's in place. And once that happens, once it converges and they only communicate information about who they're connected to, then they do something called link state announcements, which are somewhat analogous to pings. Uh, basically, the, the routers just constantly ping their neighbors saying, hey, are you there, are you there? But they don't send their whole table. They just say, are you there? And if and only if something changes, if a, if a route drops suddenly, then, then a flurry of announcements are going to happen and everybody's going to be notified that, hey, this link disappeared. So in, in the big picture, this is considered to be a more effective way of doing things. So in, in distance vector, you're just constantly getting the whole phone book transferred around. And with link state, it's more like, hey, uh, we figured out initially you know, what, what the network is, and now we just check, are you up? Are you up? And it, it doesn't take much traffic to determine that. So all right, that's all we need to know about for routers. Hopefully you have um, an idea of what the main classes of routing protocols are and generally how they work.